Okay, so come along, we're idling. No, it's pulling hard, it's pulling good. I don't know if I can tune it better, I really don't. I think this thing is just phenomenal. <laughs> In this video, we're going to look at some changes that I have done to get this performance and that new fuel tank you see, we'll put that on there. I'll show you a few struggles I had, but let's get like on this absolutely thing. Absolutely phenomenal. Oh man, we have really, really made a difference. So let's get into some of the changes that we made. Uh, obviously the first thing we're gonna do is take off the side covers and the seat so we can have access to the fuel tank bolts. I'm gonna remove the fuel tank undo the fuel lines and also don't forget with these ones you need to undo the little vacuum line at the back of the petcock just pop that sucker off and that hose actually needs to be sealed off from where it goes into the carburetor so what i ended up doing was just folding it over and wrapping a zip tie around it really tight now let's jump on the carburetor uh, the first bit of work I actually left the carburetor on the bike but we're going to remove it later on uh, so we're going to do a little bit of work on the top end of the carburetor here We'll remove this little diaphragm cover, and in there you'll see our little needle spring, and then the actual slider itself, which has the needle in the bottom of it. First thing we're going to do is bore out the hole that is to the left of the center hole, which is the hole that the needle comes through. So we're going to take that from 2.5 millimeters to 3 millimeters, and then we're also going to add a second hole right beside that one. So again, the center hole is where your needle is, and what we've done is created one hole on either side that's three millimeters and that's just going to allow a little less vacuum resistance when we pull the throttle on and off. Next modification we're going to do is to the needle itself and I have measured from the top of it, the top being the, uh, the end with the plastic spacer, I've measured down 45 millimeters and I'm going to taper that as gently as I can, as evenly as I can. But what this is going to do is kind of help increase that lower end, that instant response right off idle. Here's our diaphragm spring or the needle hold down spring. And we're going to cut this to 100 millimeters length. Now what I'm doing here is taking uh, this uh, cottage cheese container and uh, measured the thickness. And I'm going to make myself some shims so that I can shim my needle up or even pull some out, kind of move it around as I tune this carburetor. Uh, one of the reasons I did this is that, you know, you can buy a lot of these things in different kits, but my goal with this whole bike project is to do it as inexpensively as possible. So just some random hole punches that I had ended up creating a shim that worked really well. I ended up using two of these, which was equivalent about, I think it was like 35 thousandths of an inch. I figured this would be a good starting point and I can adjust accordingly. In the end, uh, I'm really, really happy. And so I'm just going to leave those as they are. Now, I tried to give you a little look in here so you can see the inside, but the camera really wouldn't have it. So you'll just have to trust me that they're sitting down there really nice and even. Put the hold down spring and the diaphragm cover back on top. And be sure that you do not lose the little O-ring that's mounted up at the top portion of the diaphragm. Now we're moving into the bottom end of the carburetor. Now, a lot of people complain about how tight these carburetor bolts are, and it is true. It is ridiculous. Just have a listen to this. Just wait for it. Wait for it. <laughs> that was ridding dang donkulous. No way should they be that tight. That, that's just, I don't know what the deal is. And again, a lot of people will actually buy the kits that you can replace these with Allen head bolts. I'm just going to leave these in there. Uh, I figured now that I've got them off, they're not going to be difficult to get to in the future. Holy smokes, you hear that? I hear it, Jeremy. No way should it be that tight. No, I agree 100%. So we're going to drop the float bowl here so that we can access the main jet. Everything looks good in there. No water or residue or dirt or anything like that. So here's the main jet, and it is a 140 jet is what this carburetor comes stock. And again, you can buy jet kits with different sizes of jets. Me trying to do this on a budget, well, it says 140 on there. That is going to be a lie because I'm taking a 1.5 millimeter drill bit, and I'm just going to drill that jet out.
<laughs> that is what you call podunk. Now it's a 150 main jet. Cool beans. Put that sucker in and we can button up the bottom of the carburetor. Now we're done on the inside. Next thing I'm gonna do is drill out the fuel mixture screw plug. So what Suzuki decided to do was they don't want people to access the fuel mixture. And so they put a little blast brass plug in there. And it's actually not that difficult to get out. I just used, you know, a drill, drill bit that correspond with the size of screw I was using. And you can kind of see as I'm twisting it, the brass is actually spinning around and sinking down. All I did was grab it with a pair of pliers, pops right out of there. And now we have access to our fuel mixer screw. Uh, I adjusted this to one and three quarter inches turns from all the way seated. So you turn it in all the way. It's a good idea to count those revolutions so you have an idea of where it comes from factory. Generally though, it's about one and a half turns out. Now, it's difficult to get into there while it's on the bike. And so what I did is I took one of these cheap little stubby screwdrivers and just ground it to the right size so that it would fit up in there. That way I can make all the modifications I need to while the carburetor is on the motorbike. And we're ready to bolt this thing back up. And the next thing we're going to move on to is some airbox modifications. So the first thing I'm going to do is just take off the side cover, uh, only so that I can actually access in there to protect it with a ray. Next thing, we'll pull out the snorkel. And that's going to be the first little bit of the modifications to the airbox. Uh, putting a rag in here so I can kind of protect the filter element and just kind of keep any debris, uh, you know, kind of out of there as much as possible. The next thing I'm going to do is drill a one and a half inch hole saw. Oh, this is a two inch, sorry, two inch hole. I did it as far away from this breather filter as possible. Uh, a lot of people say you can get some surging or weird things with your carburetor because that's actually a carburetor breather. So uh, you want to keep the air intake away from there. And that's it. We just drilled the two inch hole, removed the snorkel. That's all. I should say also that this motorbike has a aftermarket exhaust and uh, it's got a Delcovic really loud i really enjoy it i removed some of the baffling in there but not all of it uh, but in the end man I, I think i just lucked out with a great combination now in preparation for the new acharby's fuel tank the 25 liter or 6.6 .6 gallon uh, one thing you'll need to do is flip your headlights now i know a lot of companies sell brackets for this but there's really no need uh, those lights are kind of indexed uh, it's not a circle that that bolt goes through it's actually kind of flat on each side kind of keyed you just have to loosen that nut off mine was really tight so i used the vise you rotate the light 180 degrees put it back in and then install that bracket upside down worked really well didn't have to buy anything special and uh, i could get those lights moved up while I was working on the front end, I thought I would take off these really hideous reflector brackets just because they look gross in my opinion. And uh, we're just gonna leave them out. I'm gonna actually save those brackets because they might come in handy for mounting lights in the future, but it just makes it look less like a toy this way. And then we'll put our headlight cover back on. We had that off for our little fairing there just so that we could access the wires for the lights. That was the only reason. Uh, that's back on there. And then we'll fit up our fuel tank bolt it down and I ran into a little issue trying to fit the seat it was not going up what I thought was far enough and I ended up having to trim down this little bracket and so I probably took a, a decent sixteenth of an inch on each side at least and then I double checked to make sure it fit in there and I also smoothed out the edges and after that the seat went on with no problems now notice this little fuel line coming in this elbow on the carburetor it's in an awkward position from the factory, and uh, I used some sheet metal mechanic pliers there. I chose those because they'd give me a really wide grip, and I wouldn't worry about bending it, but rotating it. <laughs> and it actually worked. And with that thing moved over, I probably moved it 30 or 40 degrees. It let me put a really nice fuel line in there uh, with the fuel filter. I uh, removed the little plastic one that's inside the, the fuel inlet tube on the carburetor, and uh, really, really happy with the way that turned out. Man, I do like the sound of this motorcycle. And after a few minutes, that fuel filter did completely fill up with fuel. And uh, it's working fantastic. The last thing I did was debrand the plastics on this bicycle. I just kind of want to keep it all black. I'm still trying to figure out how to get the Acharbis logo off the side of the fuel tank. They almost seem to be painted on there. But without further ado, let's see if these performance modifications have really made a difference. Good. 
let's see what she's like right off idle. my neighbor. Oy, oy, oy. This is like a full-on traffic jam for us. hardly at all. Well that's good because that backfiring was quite obnoxious. I mean I like it. Oh there's the tank wobble. Yeah 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 this thing is definitely running better. I wonder I think I kind of want to think about what to do right off of um, what is it? 22 shell, that's good. I want to think about what to do right off idle. But it's definitely running better than before. So here's a feed lot where they finish cows. As you can imagine, this smells wonderful at times. It's not too bad today. No mail. Alrighty. Yeah, it's starting a little better, I think. Wonder if I need a little bit more idle. City on this thing, so be good. Uh, good little test for it. I, 
cannot believe how busy traffic is today. Like most days, I can do this little trip and I don't see, you know, maybe one or two cars. Well, we're gonna wait for this chap to go. Cause I kinda wanna get out on the straight, take my time. Ugh, it's not gonna happen. has never made this much power and it probably ran just as good as it did when it was bone stock. I mean, and this isn't necessarily a proper tune. I mean, I should, you know, I've seen guys that do the oxygen sensors and get right into it, but, um, you know, somebody gives you the recommended tune, but they're at a different elevation or they have, you know, much warmer temperatures or cooler temperatures. I think to do a real, real good tune, you do need like an O2 sensor and, you know, fiddle around in that regard, but, oh well. I am more than happy with this. Now one thing I noticed too before I dig the uh, carb work and I just had the can on, at this low of an idle it would tend to stall. And a few times uh, when I was, you know, at lights, at traffic lights, it would stall out on me. But my goodness, this thing is running fantastic. Wow. I tell you, this, the level of stoke right now is phenomenal. Anyways, guys, I want to thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. The goal of this bike is to save, you know, to, to mod it to what I want as cheap as possible. Obviously, something like the tank, I have to spend the money to do that. But, you know, got our fender eliminator. I ended up getting this exhaust for 225 Canadian pesos, which is a good price. And then, so far, all the carb work has just been my time, so... I haven't bought anything for that, and I don't think I will either. Um, I might order Allen bolts for those screws, but man, that's a good solid running engine right now. Yeah, I'm not sure. I might end up trying one more, one or two more shims. I'm gonna ride it like this for a bit, but uh, the change that I might, I might try shimming the needle a little bit more. But I think that 50, 115, 150 on the jet is good so stoked. All right, guys. Thanks for watching.